44.5% of individuals have said that they've been threatened by some type of digital attack. Hey folks, this is Gabe at security.org and here at security.org, we're really engaged in thinking about your home security and your digital security. Now, home security is really easy to think about, you know, a burglary, something of that nature, the physical life is, you know, really important, of course, but it's also important to think about your digital livelihood. So much of what we have these days is online. Our money, typically, um, all of our identities when it comes to social media and things of that nature, just everything uh, one can imagine is probably also digitized to some extent. So let's take some time, and this is gonna be part one of a three-part series on digital safety to help get you up to speed when it comes to digital security. Now let's begin with a definition. What is digital security? Well, digital security is protecting your computer, mobile devices, tablets, and other devices from unauthorized access. Digital security is also designed to protect you from misuse, we're talking data breaches and things of that nature, of your information by corporations and governments. Now there are a number of ways to circumvent some of the dangers you might run into online. It could be something like a VPN, it could be a password manager, an identity monitoring service. However, I think the most important thing is just knowledge of what can happen and how you can be victimized. So how can you actually be attacked online? That knowledge will help you put two and two together when people are targeting you specifically. Just to give you an idea, when it comes to cyber theft and crime online, over 10% of all people over 16 years old have had their identity stolen at one point or another. So let's begin with maybe the most exciting element of a cyber attack, the one that we all have get this idea about what it means. There's a movie starring Angelina Jolie about it, and we're talking about hackers or hacking. What is hacking? Is it a guy scrunched over a computer with a hoodie on, green ones and zeros and a dark screen going by very quickly as he hacks into the mainframe? Mm, not exactly. As we're gonna learn today, there's all different types of hacking and even different levels of ethics when it comes to hacking. First, the definition. Hacking is a practice using knowledge of technology to exploit the vulnerabilities in a system and gain access to it. The hacker, the person who performs the hack, might decide to block access to that system, they might gather data within that system, or they could even get to different devices that are in the same network. Basically three different types of hackers. There are white hat hackers, and they are gonna be hired by companies to do ethical penetration tests. And this is gonna make sure that there aren't some very obvious uh, vulnerabilities to be exploited. So they are working on your behalf. And in fact, the fact that you can go online and do so many things is basically down to the efforts of white hat hackers. Black hat hackers, on the other hand, are there to penetrate a company technology for the sake of their own personal gain, be it getting your identity, figuring something out about that company, stealing money, a lot of different reasons they may go about doing it, um, but that's what their intent is and that's what they're doing. And finally, you have gray hat hackers. They kind of are in this gray area, if you will, between not necessarily being hired by the company, but also not necessarily uh, getting into a system in order to compromise it in some way or another. They might just be curious. Basically, you have two broadly broad, broad categories when it comes to hacks. You have your zero day hacks, which is something that company's not prepared for whatsoever. They don't know it's happened. They may not even know that they've been hacked. So they are definitely uh, gonna have terrible repercussions um, when these types of hacks happen. And you also have your hacks that may just be related to any number of other arenas uh, of, of an infrastructure of a company, uh, even something they know exists and you haven't done your update and therefore you're still susceptible to that vulnerability because you haven't kept up with your software updates, for example. Generally, there are three major routes by which one will engage in hacking. The easiest and maybe the most common um, is social engineering, which is simply making someone believe that this person is an authority uh, within the system and therefore you give them your login credentials, your password, your username, any type of details that will allow for them to get into the system. So I just send you an email and I say, hey, this is Bob from IT. Uh, I need to get into your account and you send it along and Bob from IT is really, you know, uh, Bill not from IT. And he's definitely about to take it advantage of everything you've given them access to within your company or organization's um, technology infrastructure. Second, you have program-based hacking, and this is, of course, more advanced than social hacking. 
Um, it requires the hacker to find various vulnerabilities within the system and exploit them. And finally, you have physical access. This is someone basically getting a hard drive, getting access physically to a computer uh, where they can just wreak havoc on whatever you have available because they have like literal access to whatever it is that is important to you or your organization. Now, I don't know if I need to go over the fallout from what can happen when you're hacked, but I think it's clear that, you know, credit card information can be stolen. Uh, personal information can be stolen. Health information can be stolen. Um, you can attack the national security of an entire nation. Um, you can inject malware into various computers. So all of that is something that's to be kept in mind when it comes to the fallout from a hacking experience. So now I'm gonna talk about how you can protect your smartphone from hacking. Now this is really important because for so many of us, smartphones are how we get about our day. I mean, for me, it's how I pay for pretty much everything uh, each day here in New York City. So we don't want them to be exploited. And the first thing I would say for that is don't jailbreak your phone. I mean, maybe you have an extra phone that you wanna jailbreak for some reason or another. Uh, you could do that, but generally speaking, if you go on uh, iPhone, if you have iOS, if you have Android, you probably don't want to take away your phone's ability to keep itself safe. Secondly, you may want to make sure your phone locks pretty quickly. I mean, in New York, a big thing at one point uh, was just to wait for the doors to be about to close and then someone might just grab your phone. So in that case, you know, hopefully it would in pretty quickly, but you definitely want to have some kind of a lock of some, of some sort on your phone so people can't get access to it. Now, don't get me wrong, this is not a big thing in New York. I know people tell you that it's very dangerous. It's not, people aren't stealing stuff on the on the phone like that often, but you know, it has happened before where someone just wakes at that very last moment before the doors close, you grab your phone, that door closes, they say goodbye to you, they have your phone, and if you don't have it locked up, if you don't have a password, if you don't have your face ID, uh, to open it, it's gonna be really easy for those people to exploit it uh, and do a lot more than just have, you know, your thousand dollar phone in their hand. Additionally, you're gonna wanna perform all software updates. So any software that is pushed to your phone, you're gonna wanna make sure you update it, uh, it be in an app or be it the phone itself to ensure uh, that the exploits that were found in that last edition uh, don't become a problem for you. When you're setting your passcode for your iPhone or Android, maybe make it a six digit code and don't use your birthday or 11111. That's probably not a good idea. Now it's incredibly convenient and I know that I sometimes have it on, but you may wanna turn off autofill because autofill, if someone has your phone, uh, will allow them to get all of your data uh, pretty quickly. Um, if they just have your phone, even for as little as like 20 minutes, five minutes, whatever it takes to see everything that you have when it comes to autofill, like Chrome does that. Um, some of the other uh, spaces inside of Safari will do that for you. So keep that in mind. Also, when it comes to your phone, be sure to avoid, you know, phishing and pop-ups. Uh, you don't know where that link's gonna take you. You don't know what, uh, you know, someone might be sending you. So ensure you know the sender um, of anything along with uh, you know, avoid pop-ups and, you know, sites that are giving you a ton of pop-ups at any given time. All right, so that wraps up part one of our look at digital security. We have a digital security guide over at security.org. You can check it out here and check it out down there. We're gonna have it in a lot of different places for you to read comprehensively if you so desire. If not, I'm gonna bring another video to you very soon. Next video, we're gonna talk about website safety among other things. So you can know, is this site really doing what I think it's doing or is it trying to rob me? Now, of course, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. We appreciate you for watching. My name is Gabe. This is security.org. Be secure.